What is up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we are ranking the discography of Fear Factory. <laughs> and hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best damn brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, let's just dive right into it in 1992 with Soul of a New Machine. And it took me a while before I actually backtracked to this album, because like many, I think, I got into them with Demanufacture. We'll be getting to that in a second. This album, it's okay. Vocals are actually kind of silly in places. It has almost like a Cookie Monster vibe, which which was surprising the first time I listened to it, given that I was used to sort of uh, how we know Fear Factory now. Uh, I do hear more of the kind of like Godflesh influence, especially on tracks like Crisis. Uh, I dig the bass a lot on this album, like on the track Scapegoat. It's pretty cool. Lifeblind has kind of a mathy, almost Meshuggah vibe to it. Maybe even some Living Sacrifice vibes as well. But ultimately, it's kind of berating. And also 17 tracks of this is just way too much, if you ask me. Uh, kind of an interesting relic, but not something I'd really want to re-listen to regularly. I'm going to put that at C tier. All right, and then speaking of Demanufacture in 1995, instant classic, legendary industrial metal album. The first song I actually ever heard from Fear Factory was Replica. And man, what a... what. What a classic intro, just a huh! Like that became an inside joke between me and my friends for a very long time. I actually got this album at the library. Uh, I think I've told this story before. Um, yeah, we would just go to the library and I think you still can rent CDs from there. <laughs> so yeah, that was my exposure to Fear Factory was thank you to the local Arlington Heights Public Library. But yeah, also other awesome tracks on this album, Demanufacture, the title track, Self Bias Resistor, Hunter Killer, Dog Day Sunshine is kind of an interesting one too. Uh, this album is actually inspired by The Terminator, the movie and included in my industrial metal for dummies list for a good reason. This goes straight to S tier. Very strong beginnings for Fear Factory. Then 1998, we get a very solid follow-up in Obsolete, and not quite good as Demanufacture overall, I would say, but definitely some classics on here like Shock, Edge Crusher, holy shit, that one is just awesome. The stand-up bass, Descent, and then it has that weird Cars cover on it, too, which is just bizarre. But really, it works in this strange way. Uh, solid album. Gonna put it at A. All right, a little bit of a divisive one here in Digimortal in 2001. This was actually the last album originally with Dino on guitar and led to their first breakup just a year later. This is also the final in kind of the conceptual trilogy that they started with Demanufacture, but you can definitely hear the marks of new metal in the songwriting, which led to some mixed reactions. Me having come up on new metal, I was, I was cool with it. In fact, I was kind of into it in certain places. The most obvious here being the whole back the fuck up part, which is, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's of its time. Let's just say that. It's of its time. But I gotta say, I quite enjoy it for what it is. And despite having some valleys here and there, I think there's enough of that just like classic Fear Factory sound and solid tracks that uh, I would still put this relatively high, not S tier, not A tier, but with, with things, you got Lynchpin, What Will Become, the title track, I, I could put it at B. I could see it kind of lingering between B and C, but ultimately I'm going to I'm going to put it at B. 2004, we get them back at it again with Archetype. Still no Dino on this album. A uh, title track is supposedly directed at Dino uh, with the line the infection has been removed, the soul of this machine has improved. Do with that what you will. I feel like the singing on this album is a little bit off. Like, there's something weird about it that just feels different from the previous albums, and, and even the albums after. A pretty consistent album overall, but it's kind of just lacking heart and personality. It just It's a little bit blah to me. Uh, but it does have some decent tracks, my personal favorites here. Archetype, Slave Labor, Corporate Cloning... Uh, that opening bass riff on Default Judgment absolutely kills, too. But not one of their stronger outings. I'm going to go ahead and put this one at C tier. All right, 2005, we get Transgression, which has a <laughs> somewhat appropriate 
title because it got pretty mixed to negative reviews. And I agree with the comments about the weaker production that I see a lot of people talking about. There are some guest appearances on here too from Billy Gould, who's the bassist of Faith No More, and Lamb of God guitarist Mark Morton. This is also the last album with Raymond Herrera on drums and Christian Old Wolbers, who actually called it half finished and hated his guitar sound on it. I guess he ended up posting some very negative comments about Burt's writing process on this one. Metal Hammer actually named it their worst on their particular ranking, and honestly, I may have to concur. It's, it's not particularly good. Echo of my scream, need I say more? Really, I'm honestly struggling to say anything nice about this album other than that it's not the worst thing I've ever heard. So yeah, a transgression indeed. And I'm going to go ahead and put that one at D tier. But then in 2010, we get mechanized and time for a bit of a redemption arc here with the return of Dino and motherfucking Gene Hoglin stepping up on the drums for this album. This one has much better production thanks to the return of Reese Fulber, who worked on some of the earlier albums. Fast, aggressive, heavy, just just the way I like it, has a great opener like most of their best albums do, Industrial Discipline would have been right at home on D-Manufacture, honestly, Fear Campaign is a total rager, equal parts heavy and catchy, honestly better than it had any right being so late in their discography and given that they'd have such diminishing returns on albums leading up to this one. I'm gonna put this one at A tier and honestly I could almost put it at S tier, like I would consider it. I would consider it. I think it's quickly becoming maybe even my second favorite, but at very least I'll put it in the top three. All right, then 2012, we have The Industrialist, which sees a return to the concept albums. This one was recorded only with Burton and Dino and has programmed drums, which I know like for an industrial metal album is almost like par for the course and a lot of people do it, but it takes away some of the organic feel and it's just, I don't know, it's not as good, especially coming off of such a, a strong album with, again, Gene Hoglin on Trump. Speaking of which, Gene was not consulted about this decision and I guess left the band soon after. Another decent opener on this one, Recharger and New Messiah are solid singles, Disassemble as well. God Eater is kind of a cool, spooky atmosphere. It really leans into the industrial side of things for sure. Pretty darn consistent too, but again, it just feels a little soulless. Like, it almost feels like a really strong imitation of Fear Factory. So I, I think I'm going to put this one at B tier. And then in 2015, we get Genexus, which is back to live drums, this time with Mike Heller. Sounds a little bit like Burton also toying with his vocals, just a touch. Uh, more melodic elements, for better or for worse, depending on how you look at it. I like the synth on Battle for Utopia, kind of reminds me of Dancing Queen in a weird way. Expiration date is just super corny though, not a fan of that one. Kind of Static X vibes in places for some reason. And definitely a bit uneven. Some tracks sound in line with the older stuff, like the opener, but others feel more skippable, like anodized. There are some solid singles with Proto Mech, which has some cool symphonic elements. Dielectric. Soul Hacker has a great vocal intro that actually reminds me a little bit of Lynchpin and Replica. Very catchy sing-along track for that one. The Genty Groove on Church of Extinction is so infectious too, so it's, it's a mixed bag. It's another one that's kind of like teetering on the line, sort of between B and C. Definitely not one of my favorites. I'm going to also put that one like just barely at B tier, call it like a B minus C plus. And that brings us to Aggression Continuum, and I have to say, I really enjoy this album. Like, a lot more than honestly I thought I was going to, because obviously I've had a lot of ups and downs with this band's discography, and wasn't really sure what to expect, but yeah, it's really solid. I'm not going to go too in-depth with it. You'll have to check out my full album review that I'm going to have up of Aggression Continuum. But in any case, in short form, like every track is great and it has a great like polarity between the really, it has like some of their heaviest moments ever, but then also some of its softest, more melodic moments as well, but done a lot better than Gen Exus, I think. And some cool like symphonic flourishes too that I'd be interested 
to see more of in the future because it, it really worked. <laughs> it really worked. And I'd almost be interested to see like an entire symphonic Fear Factory album. But all of that to say, uh, I think I'm going to put it at A tier. It's new and fresh enough that I'm going to put it at the very tail end of A tier. Kind of more of a B plus, but I like it a lot better than all three of the B tier albums. So it just makes sense to put it there. And yeah. I think that kind of does it. So those are my Fear Factory rankings as of now. Things change over time, obviously. Sometimes I might like to revisit some of these, but let me know down in the comments, like, how would you rank these? Where are we different? Where do we have it the same? And then just stick around. I got a full playlist of these tier lists. I've done quite a few of them at this point. I think I'm inching up towards like 100. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.